Imagine a helicopter so ferocious it can hoist a Humvee, a 155mm howitzer, and a downed Black Hawk simultaneously, then sprint 110 nautical miles before breakfast. That sky crane exists, and its name is CH-53. For almost 60 years, every new stallion has shattered the ceiling of heavy lift, but behind the thunderous rotors lurk battlefield rescues no camera ever caught, a White House mission that imploded in a sandstorm, billion-dollar budget knife fights, and a 2025 scheme to turn the newest king into an airborne pickup truck of doom. Buckle in. The stallion bloodline is about to prove why brute strength still matters in an age of drones. The first CH-53A dropped into Vietnam in 1967, its twin T-64 turbines clawing at suffocating heat. On day one, the Marines discovered a loophole in physics. The bird could sling more than the manuals allowed. At Camp Carroll, crew chiefs tied a 19-foot patrol boat beneath the fuselage, skimmed treetops, and set it into the Qua Viet River, rescuing sailors who'd penciled in weeks of salvage work. Word spread, and requests ballooned, from hauling five-ton guns across paddies to airlifting elephant-sized generators onto mountaintop outposts. Heroics met headaches. Gearboxes overheated, rotor blades cracked, and a tail pylon resonance nobody foresaw threatened to shake the helo apart. Sikorsky rushed engineers to Da Nang, where they slept beside grease drums and rewrote maintenance manuals by lantern light. Inside each frantic fix lay a revelation. If the frame could survive this abuse, commanders would keep demanding more muscle. The Corps soon asked for double. Enter the CH-53E Super Stallion. Three engines, seven main rotor blades, and a payload leap from 18,000 to 36,000 pounds. Enough to fly a light armored vehicle straight off an amphibious deck. During Operation Desert Storm, Super Stallion shuttled 9 million pounds of cargo in barely four days, turning the Kuwaiti desert into a conveyor belt of steel. When a Marine howitzer battery ran low on shells, a single E model backloaded the entire ammunition pallet landed inside shouting distance of the front line, and lifted away before Iraqi artillery knew what hit them. But horsepower came at a blood price. Between 1969 and 1990, CH-53 variants killed more than 200 service members in accidents. The Navy recorded a Class A mishap rate nearly triple its helicopter average. Mechanics called the Super A Hangar Queen that devoured 40 hours of wrench time per flight hour by 2017. Yet every squadron commander who lost sleep over parts shortages still fought to keep their stallions. Nothing else could carry an armored Humvee onto a goat trail. Raw muscle echoed far beyond battlefields. In Okinawa, Japanese officials tallied hundreds of noise complaints after CH-53E thundered over schoolyards near Marine Corps Air Station Futuma. Then, on a gray October afternoon in 2017, an E-model crash-landed in a farmer's field, torching local headlines and forcing U.S. forces to ground the fleet in Japan until inspections cleared every gearbox. Stateside lawmakers fumed at the accident record. Lawsuits in 2005 claimed Sikorsky and engine maker GE ignored warning signs of in-flight fires. Plaintiffs cited 16 thermal incidents in 12 years. The controversies painted a paradox. The stallion was both indispensable and, some argued, indefensible. That tension would shadow the program into the next century and feed every congressional debate about its successor. One moonless night would make that debate existential. April 1980, eight RH-53Ds skimmed 12 feet above the Persian desert toward a clandestine refueling strip codenamed Desert One. A sudden haboob, think airborne sandpaper, blinded pilots. One rotor clipped a parked C-130, igniting a fireball seen from orbit. Eight Americans perished, and the hostage rescue collapsed. The post-mortem reshaped U.S. special operations. Terrain following radars, forward looking infrared, and the MH 53 JM Pave Low Night Stalker took shape. Rumors lingered that a low observable CH 53E variant, bristling with radar absorbent panels and whisper tip rotor blades, entered Joint Special Operations Command in the early 2000s. Pentagon budget sheets list only classified airlift procurement, fanning internet forums that still debate a Shadow Stallion's existence. Whether myth or black project, the idea proved irresistible. Stealth and lift. Lessons absorbed, the Marines demanded a clean sheet monster. Sikorsky answered with the CH-53K King Stallion. Triple 7500 shaft horsepower GE T408 engines feed a split torque gearbox the size of a hot tub. Composite blades wider than a C-130's wings churn out 88,000 pounds of thrust. 
fly-by-wire flight computers damp rotor wash jolts, letting pilots hover hands-off while an automated hook steadies 27,000 pounds of cargo in Afghan altitude heat. The King swallows a joint light tactical vehicle inside its bay, leaving the sling for an 18,000 pound external load. Inside the glass cockpit, the crew taps touchscreen maps stitched to Link 16 and multifunction advanced data link, talking to F 35B's overhead. A chin mounted EOIR turret tracks, sling loads in pitch black, while onboard diagnostics ping laptops ashore to pre stage parts before the helo even lands. Marines achieved initial operational capability in April 2022, and the first sea deployment now targets 2026 with the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. If the King looks regal, his coronation was anything but. Exhaust gas re-ingestion cook sensors, tail rotor drive shafts vibrated like jackhammers, and gearbox bearings wore out in single-digit flight hours. Each hiccup shoved milestones right, full rate production slipped seven years, and total program costs ballooned $15.3 billion. EAO analysts urged Congress to cap buys at six helos a year until fixes proved durable. March 2025 marked a detente. The Navy inked a $99.9 .9 million contract mod for 3D printed titanium parts and supply chain overhauls aimed at slicing sustainment costs by 12%. Sikorsky opened a parallel production line in Stratford, Connecticut, doubling throughput to two airframes a month and betting economies of scale would tame the price curve. On Capitol Hill, skeptics still grumble, but the King kept his funding by a single subcommittee vote. Money woes handled, Marines looked to weaponize sheer lift. At an April 2025 industry day, program boss Colonel Kate Flieger flashed slides that electrified war planners, bolt-on electronic warfare pallets, trauma ICU boxcars, and a roll-on roll-off rocket launcher dubbed HIMARS Light. Picture a five-ton pod sliding down the ramp, unfolding stabilizers, and firing six precision rockets before the helicopter's rotors stop spinning. No budget line funds those kits yet, but Force Design 2030 architects salivate over turning one helo into a Swiss Army arsenal for island hopping campaigns. Engineers also prototype an autonomous resupply module, strap sensors to a cargo net, punch coordinates into the flight computer, and the King flies itself, deposits the load, and returns. If the experiment works, the Marines could send high-value helicopters into contested zones uncrewed, risking hardware instead of human lives. Foreign militaries noticed the versatility and the drama. Israel signed a March 2025 contract to convert 12 CH-53K Pere airframes into sensor-rich, missile-ready variants tailored for desert heat and long legs to Iran's border. The deal set up a diplomatic two-step. The U.S. got to showcase Allied tech alignment. Jerusalem gained the heaviest helicopter in the Middle East. Germany, meanwhile, canceled its Schwerer Transport Hubschrauber contest in 2020 after calling both the CH-53K and CH-47F too pricey. But Berlin's defense ministry floated a 2026 rebid once budget reforms settle, a potential $6 billion prize that pits King Stallion against Chinook Redux. Australian and Japanese delegations toured Sikorsky's new assembly line this spring, eyeing replacements for aging Chinooks as Indo-Pacific tensions climb. Yet a specter looms. By the 2030s, the U.S. Army's future vertical lift-heavy concept envisions a tilt-rotor cargo craft that cruises at 270 knots and lifts CH-53 class weight. If FVL heavy proves real, Congress might favor one common airframe, pushing the Stallion dynasty into sunset by the 2040s. Why does any of this matter when drones drop bombs with zero risk to pilots? The answer lies in physics. Artillery barrels, JLTV axles, and palletized rockets still weigh tons. Satellites die, runways crater, ports vanish under anti-ship salvos. In that chaos, amphibious ready groups need something that can pull a 27,000-pound howitzer off a well deck, crest a mountain ridge, and land on an unlit soccer field. For now, CH-53K is the only Western aircraft that fits that job, full stop. Critics counter that $100 million chopper is a juicy radar target. Proponents reply that brute lift buys options no algorithm can replace. Evacuating embassies under fire, retrieving a crashed F-35 engine from a jungle clearing, or inserting a radar jammer pallet onto a reef to blind enemy missiles. The debate mirrors a century-old question. Is the best strategy to spread risk across swarms or to wager on a few giants capable of extraordinary feats? From swampy Vietnam evacuations to tomorrow's maritime kill chains, the CH-53 family has survived.
because war keeps inventing tasks too heavy for anything else. Each new variant raised the stakes. More payload, more tech, more cost, more scrutiny. The King Stallion answers today's call, but technology gallops forward. Autonomous kits already fly cargo Blackhawks. Tilt rotor dreams promise jet-like speed. NATO's next-generation rotorcraft study hints at composite behemoths with whisper-quiet rotors. So picture 2035. A stealthy tilt rotor lifts a missile pod onto a Pacific rock while an unmanned king hauls fuel bladders behind it. Offshore, older CH-53E still lug marines because budgets delayed total replacement. The stallion dynasty may share the sky with heirs and rivals, but its DNA of brute, dependable lift will echo in every future design. For now, the rotor thump of a CH-53K easing onto a flight deck still broadcasts a simple truth. No algorithm can fake raw muscle when lives and victory hinge on a single load. The next time a massive silhouette lowers out of the clouds, it might carry an artillery battery, or perhaps no pilots at all. Either way, the legend of the stallion lives on, reminding friend and foe that sometimes sheer force really does win the day.